Even those who don't know Iwo Jima by name will likely recognize the Pulitzer Prize winning photo of US troops raising a flag on a hilltop. The image, while captivating, doesn't even begin to tell the story of the bloody Battle of Iwo Jima and those who died there. On foot, the tiny speck of Iwo Jima, aka Sulphur Island, located about 750 miles south of Tokyo, Japan in the Pacific Ocean, would take only about two hours to walk across. But for the American troops who landed on the island, it cost them about 800 lives per square mile across a messy bed of soft, shifting sand and volcanic ash. Starting on February 19, 1945 and ending March 26, combat was ruthless. They say the vets of Iwo Jima have no fear of going to hell because they've already been there. U.S. Army and Navy officials believed that it was worth it, thinking Iwo Jima would make a good staging point for the Pacific. In the end, the island was used for nothing more than emergency airfields. When American troops landed on Iwo Jima, Japanese General Tadamichi Kurabayashi decided against meeting the U.S.'s storm landing head-on. Rather, he opted for a guerrilla strategy and receded into the island's inner recesses and caves. This is partially why the fighting on Iwo Jima was so difficult. On top of this, bombers shelled the island for three days before any Marine ever stepped foot on it. The brutality of the fighting on Iwo Jima, plus the subsequent viciousness during the prolonged Battle of Okinawa, which saw almost a quarter of a million soldiers and civilians killed, was a big part of why U.S. President Truman opted for dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki rather than engage in conventional land battles. Even after a three-day-long naval bombardment, Iwo Jima wasn't easy for U.S. Marines to take. Japanese troops saturated beaches with artillery shells and machine gun fire even as U.S. troops' vehicles and supplies sank into the island's soft surface. Some Marines were injured and taken out of combat back to ships. Some died and their bodies were retrieved. Some were just gone. As veteran Dick Berner described to photographer D. Clark Evans, he once saw dead stacked five high, maybe 100 yards long. Those Marines who could be collected were buried in one of three temporary cemeteries split up by Marine Division. Marines from the 3rd and 4th Division were interred in organized neat rows with headstones marked by numbers, while the 5th Marine Division Cemetery featured a stone enclosure and arched entryway. All such individuals were eventually repatriated to various places in the U.S., like Arlington National Cemetery. Not all of those who died and were recovered went to these temporary cemeteries, however. Some were buried at sea in a standing parade rest position. Some, like the photographer who took the iconic flag-raising photo, are still thought missing on the island, perhaps in one of its many caves. Our company went from 332 we had when we went to Evil down to 12 in the first 15 days. As bad as it was on Iwo Jima for U.S. Marines, Japanese soldiers faced even more horrifying circumstances, and their bodies suffered even worse fates. As mentioned, many Japanese soldiers retreated into Iwo Jima's interior, often into its caves. Those caves wound up being traps as U.S. soldiers came through with flamethrowers, spewing fire into cave mouths, thereby burning those inside to death or asphyxiating them as the fire consumed all the cave's oxygen. Or they used explosives to detonate cave entrances and bury those inside alive. Such caves, for all intents and purposes, wound up being mass graves, even to this day. Those Japanese soldiers who could be identified and collected, however, were placed in temporary graves around Iwo Jima, much like the U.S. did with their own troops. When Marines stumbled across these locations, they referred to them as enemy cemeteries. The task of rounding up deceased Japanese soldiers gets more difficult considering how many soldiers died by suicide. Many corpses are headless, as their owners followed precepts laid out by Japan's World War II General Hideki Tojo, who demanded, live and suffer not the humiliation of being a prisoner of war. Rather than being captured, many soldiers simply put a grenade to their head and pulled the pin. The bones of such individuals, as well as those who died in caves or otherwise have never been identified, amounted to a staggering 12,000 Japanese troops, more than half of their entire force. The search for the bodies of the remaining Japanese soldiers on Iwo Jima is ongoing, albeit slow and piecemeal. Recovery efforts didn't begin in earnest until 1968, when control of Iwo Jima passed back to Japan from the U.S. By then, trenches had filled up and Iwo Jima's jungles had gotten overgrown. The Japanese government conducted radar searches from 2012 to 2013, and then excavations from 2014 to 2017 of 1,800 potential locations, with limited success. One of the most promising recovery zones under Iwo Jima's airstrip remains untouched. Other recovery efforts are spearheaded by relatives or friends of the deceased, many of whom are elderly and require help. And yet, bones have cropped up over the years. Most notably, two mass graves were discovered in 2010, containing up to 2,000 of the 12,000 total unrecovered soldiers. Dig site supervisor Kazuo Takinoshita told NBC News, many of the remains were little more than grains of sand. 
They were often piled two to three deep. One soldier's head would be resting on another's feet. Taken all in all, those deceased soldiers, either U.S. or Japanese, who made it back to their home countries could be counted among the lucky. While we don't know precisely which cemeteries this or that soldier went to, we know that final resting places are a matter discussed between militaries and the loved ones of the deceased. Some military cemeteries, like Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, don't charge fees for internment to the dead, which could prove very helpful for family members. Arlington would also prove a fitting resting place because it contains the Iwo Jima Memorial, a statue of the famed flag-raising photo. And yet, many U.S. Marines take the entirety of war-torn Iwo Jima to be a World War II memorial. As the U.S. Naval Institute says, the entire island is a shrine. The wreckage of the battle remains everywhere on the island, from decayed ammunition to entire tanks, mess kits to lost ships offshore. Marines treat the island like a kind of pilgrimage site, or even holy site, to honor the dead on both sides. On the United States Marine Corps official site, Lieutenant Evan C. Clark described American and Japanese veterans from the conflict meeting on Iwo Jima 40 years years after the battle ended. They, quote, came together in friendship to honor the sacrifices of those who fought bravely and honorably, and a plaque was raised in honor of the event. We can only hope that such gestures are enough for those who still remain on Iwo Jima. There isn't a day goes by that I don't think of some of my boys, you know? I know their names just like it's yesterday. <laughs>